So, a warm welcome to all of you to an another lecture on this course on simulation of uh, communication systems using MATLAB. So, till now we have discussed Monte Carlo simulations and we have discussed random processes and how to generate random processes. So, but uh, we have said earlier that this course is about communication. So, starting this lecture we will start talking about communication or we will start with the basics that uh, we will talk about some practical signals that uh, we consider uh, while we discuss electronic communication systems. So, practically when we communicate over electrical communication systems that can be uh, telephone, television, your uh, laptop, cell phones, anything. So, we practically deal with these forms of signals, images, speech, econometric indices, but uh, mainly we when we communicate as in, in a layman's perspective, we talk about there are video calls, videos. So, now the question is that uh, how are these signals important? As we have said earlier that uh, even if we talk about these communication will be of little value we know what these signals going to look like. Communication will be little value if we know what these signals we have said this earlier I'll just I'm just repeating it that uh, communication has very little value if we already know what someone is going to say or what if we already know what a picture is going to look like. So, in order for communication to make sense, we should know that uh, or there should be some amount randomness. So, there should be some amount of randomness in all these signals or these practical signals. So, these are actually practical signals, not directly used for communication. These are practical signals that are not directly used for communication. So, these by nature are random. So, again these also convey information and these by nature are random. So, one important step in communicating with these signals is knowing how they behave. If we know how these signals behave, because then, then can engineer methods that suit the best to this that suit the best to this behavior and hence are optimal hence are optimal for communication in some sense fine. So, these are uh, some practical signals that we will deal with. So, or in short we or if I use I should use another color pen here. So, to work 
optimally with these signals we want to develop models we want to develop models for their behavior or we want to develop statistical or stochastic models for communication we want to develop statistical or stochastic models for uh, communication systems so now we will now discuss in the next few lectures about stochastic models and how to implement them in matlab stochastic models and how to implement them in matlab so we'll uh, start with the formal definition of the word model so a model is an hypothesis that may be applied to explain or describe the hidden laws that are supposed to govern the generation of physical data so any keyword being hypothesis so if it fits it works so we hypothesize that uh, this might be how that physical data is being generated so this is how the speech might be generated this is how the images might be generated and another keyword being the hidden laws so the laws governing the generation are not known but uh, we say that okay this set of equations equations mimics the practical or data quite well so we may call this model and so the signals that we are talking about are highly speech is highly correlated econometric indices are highly correlated images are highly correlated videos are highly correlated so the speech signals that we are talking about are highly correlated random sequences or highly correlated are highly correlated random sequences or highly correlated time series so we want our models to be to generate such data for starters we consider a generic model which is yeah we, for starters we consider a generic model that uh, white noise or random a generic linear time invariant system so lti i believe you know linear time invariant so we consider a generic uh, linear time invariant system that uh, white noise random shocks as input can generate highly correlated meaningful data that can generate highly correlated meaningful data matlab is off so i'll just kick start matlab in the background while we discuss this because we have to implement all of this in matlab anyway so we have talked about these and so we will explain this or we will we have elaborated on the first two points in the previous slide so we'll just talk about the third point so 
factors highly correlated random data mean so in order to talk about uh, an image as an example so this screen that you are seeing so we all know that images are composed of pixels or picture elements so all of you would have uh, cameras or most of you would have cameras in your phones if you are watching this on a phone most probably that's a smartphone and that has a camera built into it and that camera has uh, something called uh, means pixels so it might be 10 megapixel it might be 12 megapixel it might be something like 48 megapixels those come in all ranges it can be 2 megapixel that doesn't make much of a difference but the point is that it captures picture elements captures picture elements and these picture elements or pixels so if you zoom an image enough so the picture elements next to one another will be quite similar so uh, say you take a picture of my face so and it's a 3 megapixel camera which means that uh, my face is contained within uh, or the picture of my face contains uh, uh, 3 million pixels so 3 million pixels or 3 into 10 to power 6 pixels so most of those will be covered in the color of my skin or suppose you take a picture of my bust like this from a 3 megapixel camera or 2 megapixel camera 2 million pixels so a lot of picture elements that cover my shirt would be blue so this will be blue the picture element next to it will be blue and so on but uh, it will be different shades of blue again uh, the gray in my hair isn't visible here but uh, most, so most of it will look uh, black but uh, so this will be black this will be black and so on so what i'm trying to say is that uh, the picture elements will be you can predict one picture element very nicely using all the others and only the edges will be slightly problematic similarly for speech when i say something we'll talk about uh, speech signals in greater detail in the next chapter so i'm uh, skipping out the statistical details right now but uh, more or less you could uh, the point of speech is that uh, you can yes from each word you can uh, more or less predict what is the next word going to be or uh, uh, from each sentence you can more or less tell what's the next sentence going to be more or less you cannot say uh, predict it exactly if you can predict it exactly then the point of the next sentence will be lost uh, i hope you follow this that uh, if you can exactly tell me what the next sentence is going to be then uh, the point of uh, the next sentence will be totally lost but at the same time if it is uh, totally unrelated say i start speaking something like uh, this is a course on communication systems using matlab and uh, kepler's laws state that uh, the planets move in uh, ellipses and uh, there are 6.0 to 3 into 10 to power 23 molecules of compound in one mole and uh, there is algae that uh, produces oxygen all of these are still coherent statements but uh, you cannot predict uh, anything uh, you cannot predict one statement from the other or you one statement is totally unrelated to the other all of those are from basic science that is still related but yeah more or less so then if i start if you start speaking like that you'll in, even if i start speaking like that i'll be shoved possibly shoved into a uh, mental institution and not being allowed to uh, teach courses online that's for sure so anyway the point is that uh, whatever information we have so have is highly or rather so practical signals that we deal with signals that we deal with are related to the past not something dramatically new so signals like my sentence the choice of my sentences are something not 
dramatically new not new but still new enough to make that a valid signal so but still new enough so signal at each point so or xn at each point the output is a uh, can be seen as signal xn linear combination of past values of xn plus linear combination of the past inputs so the signal in general can be seen as the linear combination of past values of xn because it will be highly dependent on the past plus a uh, linear combination of the past input so this input so all of this is interesting actually not just the input so let us look at this so the first signal model which is also the most extensively used statistical signal model is the ar process or the auto regressive process so a random process xn i'll just correct this this should be a lower case but it got auto corrected into upper case xn is called an auto regressive process if of order m if it satisfies the following equation or for the following difference equation so this is so linear constant coefficient difference equation this you must have uh, done in your digital signal processing course or you would have done in your digital signal processing course and uh, so if it satisfies the following difference equation so xn plus a weighted value of the past or weighted linear combination of the past so xn plus weighted or linear combination of its past values values equals vn and a1 to am called ar ar coefficients or auto regressive coefficients and in the vector form we can write this as this so here x m x1 x n minus 1 x n minus m this is the vector and a equals or a bar equals 1 a1 a2 a m so both of these are both are length both are length m vectors and so this should be pole face should be pole face and equivalently taking these coefficients on the right hand side i get xn equals weighted linear combination the past plus vn so we haven't talked about vn actually so vn 
is a it has multiple names white noise term error term or the innovation component so this has multiple names so in other words i'll insert a slide here in other words but for this vn xn can be written as xn equals w hermitian x m n minus 1 or xn can be written as k x n minus k so this x n is exactly x n is exactly determinable it's x n is exactly determinable by its past values without vn xn becomes a deterministic signal so if we add vn if we add vn then vn is the randomness that keeps xn slightly unpredictable so if you are trying to predict xn in terms of its past if you are trying to predict xn in terms of its past then vn is the error that so vn is the error that will occur if in other words vn is what is new in xn with respect to its vn is what is new in xn with respect to its past and hence vn called the innovation vn is called the innovation component or what is new and this is the innovation component now we see that you see the reason for the use of the term autoregressive so a linear model so in general this is you know, taken from a book uh, simon hakin's so this is simon hakin adaptive theory fourth edition this is taken from simon hakin's adaptive filter theory so the lot of figures will also be taken from there we'll just show the appropriate references whenever there there are so a linear model relating an independent variable y 
to another independent variable x oh, sorry a dependent variable y onto another variable x plus noise is called a regression model or it is called regressed on x1 to xm. And in our case, we say that xn regresses on or depends on its own past values. Hence, it is called an autoregressive. So, Xn regresses on or depends on its own past values and hence it is called an autoregressive process. The innovation component as I said is this is the newness in the regression model, this is the newness in the regression model and most generally it is modeled as a white noise, most generally this is modeled as a white noise process. So, now let me go back and take this equation. So, I am using a blue pen. So, let me take this equation. I will possibly write it again. So, xn plus a1 xn minus 1 plus a2 xn minus 2 so on equals vn. If I take the z transform, you know the z transform. Again, I hope uh, you have done a course on digital signal processing. So, I hope you are aware of the z transform. If I take the z transform, I get this. So, az xz plus vz and az naturally is 1 plus a1 z in a1 conjugate z inverse plus conjugate z2 minus 2 a m z minus m. So, this so English lesson if I write this corresponds to a finite impulse response filter. I, I can either say this corresponds to a finite impulse response filter or I can say that this corresponds to to an FIR filter. So, just something that uh, you should know whenever you are using an abbreviation that uh, you intend to pronounce that abbreviation as FIR then because the letter F starts with the vowel A. So, you write an and when you want to write it finite impulse response you since it's, it starts with a consonant you write a. But when you speak and you want to speak it as a, you speak want to speak the full form then you speak a FIR filter but yeah so something that is slightly unrelated but important to know. So, AZ is the Z transform. Of so, what does this equation tell us? This equation says that if we feed the process xz to this filter az, then we will generate a white noise process and or if we create the inverse system. say bz equals 1 over az. So, naturally if az is a finite impulse response system, its uh, inverse will be infinite impulse response or a pure feedback system. So, if we use white noise and pass it through, so vz times 
bz gives me xz or in general if I pass any white noise process through this bz it will give me a same correlation structure as xz. So, the question now is what do we mean by this correlation structure, but uh, let us so again this picture is taken from Haken's book on adaptive filter theory that uh, you take or uh, this is a visualization of what we said in the earlier slide that uh, you take a sample of the process. So, the book uses un, so I will just correct this. You take a sample of the process, feed it into, so this is a as you know this is an FIR system, this is a finite impulse response system, you get it and uh, with appropriate weights. So, you get the white noise process only with these weights, we will show all of this in the subsequent lectures and samples of white noise nu n or v n. And similarly, if you take this white noise process and pass it through a feedback system A1 fed back here, so this is this actually will give you xn, so x, x, so this is a time delayed version of xn. So, if you take this white noise process and pass it through this IAR system, you get a random process xn that uh, has a correlation structure. So, yes, you get a process that has the same correlation structure as xn. So, since we have taken two figures, it is time to reflect on what we have done. And uh, since these are copied, so this is also copied from Wikipedia actually. Uh, so, it is generally said that if you copy from one source, it is called plagiarism and if you copy from two, it is called research. So, because we have built this course copying from multiple books, this course is a product of research. This guy is credited with this course who and incidentally was a con man, yes, anyway. So, what are we waiting for? Let us uh, build an autoregressive model on MATLAB. So, so let us let me call this save as AR example, so building we will build an autoregressive model in MATLAB, we will build symbol But uh, how do we get its correlation will be a subject of the subsequent lecture. So, right now all we know about uh, AR process is that consists of components that regress the past. For this example, we consider m equals 3 and a1 equals 0 0.5, A2 equals 0 0.2 and A3 equals minus 0 0.1. So, this so we will only build it and uh, the ensemble autocorrelation uh, we will discuss once we are familiar with the correlation structure of NAR process because otherwise it would not make any sense. Now, we will just look at building this and we will assume that the process is causal that is x n equal to 0 for n less than 1 because MATLAB starts indexing at 1. So, we assume that it is 0 for n less than 1. So, how do we do this? First generate the innovation component We want say n equals 10,000. 
we want to generate generate samples the process first the samples of the so say v i call rand then and just i'll just do a real valued process right now complex valued processes we can look at later so white gaussian noise and say now we want to generate the process so initialize x zeros so since the past is zero we say that so the first sample the process is causal only the only the innovation component will matter and let me define the vector a as a equals 0.5 comma 0.2 and 0.1 this x2 is a1 times x1 plus v2 this is there x3 will be a1 times x2 plus a2 times x1 plus v3 and in general so these are the three processes which will or these are the three samples which won't have a complete uh, knowledge of the past or which will be affected by so the first m samples in this case 3 be affected by the process being causal and after that we can simply use the recursive equation that once we have the first three samples all the other samples can be generated by for t equals 4 to n copy paste x t equals a1 x t minus 1 x plus 3 x t minus 3 plus v t in general this is the equation for the ar process and uh, what i have done wrong here is i have used wrong form of bracket so i'll correct that quickly correct that everywhere should be it so this and this generates an xt so but uh, the question is that we generated an xt or uh, we generated a random process that has the same length as v but uh, if we try to plot so plot x oh, sorry escape so plot x we try to plot x we get nothing but noise so th this still looks like noise but uh, we say that uh, this has a fixed correlation structure so the next question is that uh, how do we 
figure out that if x has the correlation structure that we want. That is something that we will try to answer in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.